of prayer from wisdom embassy canada we are we are in this conference the passover conference so wherever you are i want you to just join us wisdom embassy ghana wisdom embassy usa wisdom embassy canada i want you to join us as we go into a moment of prayer on behalf of our pastor pastor s adam wannabe and pastor constance wannabe we say welcome we welcome you wherever you are in the islands africa we say welcome Welcome and God bless you. Tonight I want you to put on the full armor of God tonight as we go into a moment of prayer. Amen. Right now we're going to pray and we're going to commit the atmosphere into the hands of the Lord. Mighty God, Father, we pray and we commit the atmosphere of we church into your hands tonight, Jehovah God. Mighty God, we pray and we saturate. We command the atmosphere to be conducive tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let the atmosphere of we church, let the atmosphere be conducive tonight. Conducive for your people to receive. Conducive, oh God, for the word of God to flow. Mighty God, we pray and we commit. We commit the atmosphere tonight. Mighty God, we command that. We command the atmosphere tonight. We command the atmosphere to be conducive in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pull down the strongholds. Every stronghold in the atmosphere tonight. We pull it down in the mighty name of Jesus. We command the atmosphere. We command the atmosphere to be conducive. Every stronghold tonight. We pull it down. We tear it down in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray. We pray in the name of Jesus that the atmosphere will be conducive. That we God let the atmosphere of God be saturated in the fire of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh mighty God, release your fire. Release your fire in this place. Release your fire tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us shut your mouth and get your heart. Let us put our hands in the fire. Let's 
I want us to pray and I want us to commit the speaker into the hands of the Lord tonight. Uh, that the Lord will give him the grace and the unction to function tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, let us pray and commit the man of God before the throne room of grace. Uh, mighty God, we pray tonight uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray and we commit your servant uh, into thy hands tonight, Jehovah God. Uh, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus uh, that Lord God, you will anoint him afresh. Uh, we pray that your glory, mighty God, uh, will descend upon him in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, oh, mighty God, we pray uh, that Lord God, fresh fire and fresh oil uh, will be released upon your servant tonight. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, mighty God, may you give him the unction, uh, the unction to function tonight. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, may he preach your word tonight with power. May he preach your word with authority. Uh, may he preach your word with understanding. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, that we pray, oh God, that your people uh, will be blessed tonight um, that even through your word Jehovah God um, that as your word goes forth tonight um, your word will break chains tonight um, your word will bring forth deliverance tonight um, your word will save us all tonight um, your word mighty God um, your word will continue to be a light um, a light unto the path of your people um, mighty God your word um, your word your word your word um, your word mighty God um, mighty God will come through uh, bone and marrow tonight um, in the mighty name of Jesus, um, Father, I pray that your word, um, your word will go forth, mighty God, um, and accomplish that which you are sent it to do, um, in the mighty name of Jesus, um, Jesus. 
hallelujah. Oh, we are still praying, viewers. I just want to share a bit about Wisdom Embassy with you. Wisdom Embassy is a ministry built on four W's. That's the pillars that anchors the ministry together. We stand on the wisdom of God, the word of God, the work of God and worship. Amen. So if you are new to Wisdom Embassy, we just want to share with you what we stand for, what anchors the ministry together. Amen. Uh, pray, pray, pray. We are still praying. Hallelujah. Right now we're going to pray. As we are praying for the past week, we have been on the subject, the plagues, the ten plagues. In the mighty name of Jesus, tonight we're going to pray concerning the firstborns. We're going to pray that none of your firstborns, the unborn, and the ones yet to be born, and those who are already being born, tonight we're going to pray that no plague, no plague shall touch them. The firstborn in the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to pray that the plague that the enemy will send against your firstborn, it shall not stand in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we pray tonight that in the mighty name of Jesus, mighty God, we pray and we cover every firstborn. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon every firstborn tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty God, we decree and we declare that Lord God, the plague will God. No plague shall touch the firstborn. In the mighty name of Jesus, we wallow them, O God, in your blood. We saturate them in your blood tonight. We decree and we declare that every firstborn is preserved under your blood. Those, O God, who are even yet to be born, mighty God, we cover them. We cover them. We cover them. We cover them, O God. And we decree and we declare that nothing, O God, nothing shall harm them. In the mighty name of Jesus, that any we will not touch up our first bones up in the mighty name of Jesus. We cover them up. We cover them, oh God. We hide them under your blood. We decree and we declare that our first bones up. They are covered up. They are marinated up. They are wallowed in your blood. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we cover every first bone up. Every first bone, oh God. A mighty God, wherever they are. Right now, we pray and we cover them up. We cover them in your blood tonight. Rebashanda. Mighty God, those that are yet unborn, mighty God, we pray and we cover them. We cover them. We cover them in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we decree and we declare that no plague, no plague shall come nigh their dwelling. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we decree and we declare that the plans of the enemy concerning the firstborn, it shall not stand. It shall not stand. In the mighty in the name of Jesus, let every firstborn be delivered from the snare of the enemy. Let every firstborn be delivered, oh God, from every plot, every plan. In the mighty name of Jesus, let every firstborn be delivered from the snare of the enemy. Tonight, uh, that the plague, uh, no plague shall come nigh the dwelling uh, of any firstborn. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, we cover them tonight. Uh, we cover every firstborn. Uh, we cover every firstborn. Rapa shanda raba sataya. Rebe ketende rebe siyando rebo soto wa. Roko poto pataya. Mashataya. Raka shata tataya makondo rebo soto wa. Rapa katana raba siyando rebo so wa. Zipa kataya maseke Riba shata tata ya makaya, Riba kata daraba. Mashata ya ba kata ya ba ha. Roko tobo sokori ya manda ya ba dara ba ba ha. Re kata ya ba dorobo koto ya ba sodori ya ba ba. Rapa ta ya ba kata ya ba dorobo ha. Re pa 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 ba dara ba soko tobo sokori ya. Come on, open up your mouth and just begin to love on the Lord tonight. Come on, I want to hear your voices praising Him and honoring Him. Continue to give God praise. Come on, open up your mouth and tell Him what you're expecting tonight. Tell Him that you are expecting Him to come and move in your life. That like you want to see His move like never before. Makusha tabo sekete, rakose katama mama mama sha. 
Reka, come on, open up your mouth. I want to hear you speak to the Lord. Ah, Father, receive the glory tonight. Father, receive the praise tonight. Father, receive all the glory that is due to your matchless name. We honor you. We glorify your name. We bless your holy name. There is no one that can be compared to you. Nobody can be even come close to you, oh God. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. Heavenly Father, we love on you tonight. No other God but you. No other God but you. You're deserving of all the glory. You're deserving of all the honor. Ancient of days and the lily of the valley. Bright morning star, we give you the highest praise. We bless your holy name. For the another mama shia bo se kete ala la la la. Come on, somebody open up your mouth. Rekeshe kata mande keshe ya ba. I kama mande kete debe shata ya ba. Rekasha ta ya bo sha. Rekese kete ha. Makuta ya ba se ha. You are exalted above every other god. You are lifted up above all other gods. We lay our crowns and we worship you. your right hand our pleasures forevermore. Hallowed be your matchless name. Hallowed be your name tonight. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your wonderful name. We give you the glory. We give you the praise, Jehovah God. You alone our heart's desire and we worship you, oh God. We give you the blood, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you the praise. We honor your name for your name is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are safe. We are depending on the name, oh God, tonight. That we will lift up the name of Jesus and things will begin to change. There's no way that we can be in your presence, oh God. There's no way that we can lift up the name of Jesus as the things remain the same. We thank you for the blood of Jesus as we celebrate the death and the resurrection of your son. We appreciate you, Lord. We appreciate you for the sacrifice that you made. Amen. We thank you, Lord, and we give you the highest praise. Is somebody, oh, is somebody grateful today for the blood? Amen. Is somebody yeah. happy that you are here today? Amen. The Bible says when through two or three are gathered, he is surely in our midst and we believe and we know for sure that the Lord is in our midst. Amen. We give him the praise. Blessed be the Lord, our God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord, our God Almighty. Who reigns forevermore? Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord God. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. Was and is. Blessed be.
out of the way oh God remove we put flesh under subjection oh God our hearts long to worship you our hearts long to worship you tonight we give you the glory in Jesus name come on clap those hands and tell your neighbor if it wasn't for your his love come on thanks to somebody said if it wasn't for your love wasn't for your grace I don't know where I'd be without you. Tell your neighbor, say, if it wasn't for your love.
Where would we be? Where would we be? One more time, sing it. 
exalted Oh Lord I got saved Hosanna in the high Open up your mouth wisdom embassy Come on open up your mouth And we say oh Say 
Take your right for place. Nobody like you, Lord. Take your right for place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we say, I feel him up here. I feel him up here. I feel him up here. Yes, 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 yes. Nobody like you. Lord. Nobody like you. Lord. Come on, come on, come on. And sing it. Nobody like 
there's somebody watching online right now there's a job you are looking for it has been given unto you Amen. it has been released unto you tonight Amen. it has been released unto you it has been released Le Cabrando, I command that waste pain out. I command it to check out now. I command it out. Out. I command it leave. Capaya de Bosch. Le Cabrado, Siva. I look high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody could. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Tonight. Somebody tell your neighbor tonight is a night for you. Come on, come on. The night tonight is your night. Oh, come on, tell that person tonight is your night. Oh, 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 tonight is your night. Cabrado sha. Cabrado sha ta ta pa. Do me a shake, a shake. Do me a shake. Do me a shake. Cabrado ziva kapa. Come on, come on, come on. Help me celebrate our online viewers. Come on, help me. Come on, we can do better than this. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Let's celebrate our online viewers. Everybody Watch it from Ghana, Jamaica, South Africa, America, Canada. We celebrate you all. We celebrate you. Everybody say,
Tell your neighbor the tomb is empty. Come on, I want to hear you one more time. The tomb is empty. Oh, hey. The tomb is empty. Let me hear Hey! Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, catch the revelation. <laughs> Come on, let's celebrate the band, the musicians, let's celebrate them. Amazing job. We celebrate the media team, the ushers, the event team, the assassin slash the snipers. We celebrate each and every one. We celebrate the prayer line. We celebrate all those who are also watching from home. Oh, please help me celebrate the mama of the house. Pastor Constance, we love you so much. We celebrate you. Hey, Kapaya. Tonight, there's another visitor that came along. And please help me celebrate Daniel. Come, 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 come. That, 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 that is, that is Reverend Sun. This one, a big producer. Yes, he, he's into music. All the, uh, give me some rap music. Let me give some. L -l -l let me give you some free rap. So that at least you can produce me. Next week. Okay, the choir said no next time. God bless you for coming. We celebrate you. That is a drama, a keyboardist too. That's a musician. To be honest with you, uh, Reverend has musicians. The, the, the daughter also sings powerfully. Yes, yes. Oh, mama, mama has already wired small. On the, yes, 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 yes. Please, without wasting my time, please help me. Let's celebrate the woman of God, Mrs. Kwachi. Please, if we can do better, let's celebrate Mrs. Kwachi. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. It has been a blessing. Thursday, Friday, today is another day. Without wasting my time, please help me bring onto podium Reverend Yao Kwachi. Hallelujah. Praise God. We church. We thank God for your lives. Um, it's an amazing worship and praise. I mean, it takes you to the highest high. It takes you to the highest high. And I always love to be in the presence of the Lord, worship and praise. You know, it takes you, it changes the atmosphere, it changes everything. I mean, if there's no message even preached, at least I can leave and knowing that I'm going home. And I've been in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And that is why the enemy refuses to accept his downfall. Because he was in the place of worship. And he led the choristers. He knows the power of worship. Amen. Amen. Today, I believe the Lord would want us to minister to each and every one. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to help me not lengthen the message today, but We'll have room to pray with each and every one of you because in this world we live in right now, you look at how the world has become so sophisticated. Now, people are going to church on Zoom, on the internet. Growing up, I never thought this would ever happen. Today they have Uber Eats where cars are delivering food to your doorsteps. No more when your father will send you to go and buy sugar and you are late and they will whip you on your buttocks. Now cars are doing that job. And now the cars, some of them don't have human beings in them anymore. Driverless cars. Things are changing. Computers are doing so many things. And you ask yourself, where are we going? What cannot be done? It looks as if everything has become possible. And that is why the world are fighting to say that there is no God. I am happy to say something. The Lord said in the last days, you see, he knew what was going to happen in the last days. 
that when all resources and dependencies on technology and everything, man will find out that it can only take you thus far. And when it stops, the question is, what can take me to the next level? So he said, in the last days, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Young men and young women and old men. Visions, dreams, and prophecy. What the Lord was saying is that these three things are going to take you to the next level. Where computer stops, where everything comes to an end. These three things will take you and bring you to the finish line. So if you look at Paul the Apostle, that was his life. Visions and dreams. Visions everywhere he went. That's why he said, I count everything I've attained as dung. That I'll press towards the mark of the high calling and reach out towards Jesus Christ, his Lord and Savior. Father, we thank you tonight for what you're about to do. And we pray that, Father, this message will be written on the table of the hearts of your people. And when we live tonight, this word will provoke your children unto good works. They will remain restless until they achieve your purpose on earth. Every multi-millionaire and billionaire in this place is going to be activated tonight. And they will begin to walk in that anointing. We are going to pray tonight that creativity and invention will begin to press on you night and day. That you will begin to own your own business. Hallelujah. It's going to happen. And I'm going to show you in the scriptures a man that God showed that power. And I'm going to show you some few things that will bring you to a place of understanding that God has not forsaken you. He is still doing something. May you have your seats. We're going to read Hallelujah. I wanted to sing a song but I don't know if Amen. And um, I believe Look, the tomb is empty. Oh. The tomb is empty. So if you go to the tomb, there is nobody there. There's nothing. If the soldiers have run away, they've gone. <laughs> The body has been removed. So tonight, I just want us to bask in the glory of God. And when I'm done, I'm just going to ask that we, we just enter in another level of praise and worship. Amen. And I'm going to ask you to help me tonight. Not now, but when we finish. Yes, you are the Lord. You see, that song, it touches my heart. Yes, yes, you are the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to stand and lift up your hand unto Most God. High. Yes, yes, you are the Lord. Hallelujah. Most lift up your hand unto the Lord. High. Yes, you are the Lord. Hallelujah. Most high.
majesty and your glory and your power. Amen. The angels of the Lord is in this place. Amen. And his trails fill the temple. Amen. The Holy Ghost Amen. is moving in this hour Amen. over the lives of his children. You shall never be the same again. Amen. For the tomb is empty. You are rising. You are rising. You are rising. There is a shift in the atmosphere. There is changing of gears. You shall never be the same again. Oh yes. Your presence Lord. Your trail fill the temple. And the angels cry, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who has and is to come, the seraphims and the cherubims, they fly with their wings around their feet and their eyes are closed because they cannot be visited, your glory and your holiness. You are in this place, Lord, the most high. Jeremiah chapter 12 verse 1 to 6. Makata ya rabakupahaya. Mazebra kotabazaya. Jeremiah 12 1 to 6. Jeremiah 12 verse 1. Lord, you always give me justice when I bring a case before you. So let me bring you this complaint. Why are the wicked so prosperous? Why are the evil people so happy? You have planted them and they have taken root and prospered. Your name is on their lips, but you are far from their hearts. But as for me, Lord, you know my heart. You see me and test my thoughts. Drag these people away like sheep to be butchered. Set them aside to be slaughtered. How long must this land mourn? Even the grass in the field has withered. The wild animals and birds have disappeared because of the evil in the land. For the people have said, the Lord doesn't see what's ahead of us. If racing against mere men makes you tired, how will you race against horses? If you stumble and fall in open ground, what will you do in the thickets near the Jordan? Even your brothers, members of your own family have turned against you. They plot 
and raise complaints against you. Do not trust them, no matter how pleasantly they speak. I have abandoned my people, my special possession. I have surrendered my dearest ones to their enemies. My chosen people have roared at me like a lion of the forest. So I have treated them with contempt. My chosen people act like speckled vultures. But they themselves are surrounded by vultures. Bring on the wild animals to pick their courses clean. Many rulers have ravaged my vineyard, trampling down the vines and turning all this beauty into a barren wilderness. They have wasted it, an empty wasteland. I hear its mournful cry. The whole land is desolate and no one even cares. Amen. On all the bare hilltops. Amen. 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 Thank you. I would like you also to read Jeremiah chapter 11. Just only 18 to 20. Just only two verses. Jeremiah 11, 18 to 20. Verse 18. Yes. Then the Lord told me. 11, uh, Jeremiah 11, yes, 18, go ahead. Yes. Sorry. Then the Lord told me about the plots my enemies were making against me. I was like a lamb being led to the slaughter. I had no idea that they were planning to kill me. Let's destroy this man and all his words, they said. Let's cut him down so his name will be forgotten forever. Amen. Thank you. The Lord has sent Jeremiah to proclaim his order and commandment against the children of Israel who were living in a life that was not pleasing to him. They were worshipping other gods and serving other monuments and it rekindled the anger of God. And God sent Jeremiah to proclaim his judgment against them. And in the midst of Jeremiah to concentrate on the proclamation that the Lord has sent him, he got a bit distracted. Because the people who rose against him were people who were wicked. They were evil people. And they were prosperous. They were successful. And when you look at Jeremiah's life, it seemed there was nothing in his life that was pleasing. There was nothing to talk about. Who are you to tell us? And we don't see any success. We don't see any prosperity in life. You are making so much noise in our midst. And Jeremiah got frustrated. Went to God and said, Lord, you look at the wicked. Look at how they are prospering. Look at how they are successful. It means that every week, some of them are changing their cars. Some of them are moving from house to house, small house to a big house to a mansion. Lord, look at them. And they are speaking evil against you. But look at me. Me, I've not done anything. I've been serving you. I've been loving you. I've been all faithful to you. But Lord, I'm getting a bit desperate. Because they are angry. They are cursing me. They are swearing at me. Lord, look at what they're doing. I don't know if anybody here can identify with what I'm talking about. Father, look at them. Maybe this scenario might not be something that you can identify with. But don't you know that sometimes when you come to church and you hear people testifying of how blessed they are, how miracles are happening in their life. And another Sunday, Sister Johnson will come. Pastor, I have a testimony. They take the mic and you are hearing and you look at yourself and you see nothing is happening. Then you go to your closet and you begin to pray. I said, Lord, have I done anything? Look, I've been praying, I've been fasting, I've been doing all these things. So Jeremiah was complaining. And he would go before God and telling God about his accomplishment and his distinction. And I mean, he forgot who God is. God knows your in and out of life. He knows you're going in and you're coming out. He knows you're bowing down and you're lifting. He knows. So why are you going to tell him these things? But you see, in life, when you are distracted, you end up on the other side of the coin. When you are distracted and you don't understand and know where you are going in life, you start looking left and right. And you start measuring up to people who have already made it. But you have no idea how they made it. <laughs> the tomb is empty, you. I'm going to show you what the empty tomb has to do with this. 
So you find that you are not focused enough. Every time you are anxious, anxiety seeps in. When you see somebody come to church and they have a testament for pastor, you remember you prayed for me about six months ago, yeah. And you prophesy over a new career. Father, here's the kids. Then everybody shall pray the Lord. Then you are there. You see, I know the feeling because I've been there. I've been there. So Jeremiah went to God. He said, Father, can't you see? Can't you see the prosperity of the wicked? Can't you see the success of the wicked ones? Look at how they are amassing wealth and they are making it. Have you realized that in this pandemic, it is the unbelievers who are making more than ever before. The unbelievers have begun to go to space. Look, we, there are countries in Africa that buses are not working. But the unbelievers are preparing a spaceship that will take people to space, mass, for $25 billion. And the ship is full. Paid in full. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's paid in full. They want to go and see mass. M-A-R-S. Where there's no human being. Known. No grasshoppers. There's nothing there. They just want to go and see. 25 million USD. Pay. The ship is full. They are preparing for the next flight. Individual. One by one. Are you hearing me? They are unbelievers. So Jeremiah went before God and was complaining. And I love how God listened to him and waited. It's like you come to your father and say, Dad, you know, I went to school today and they beat me. And your father is watching you when they finish. You don't know what's going on. You know, you get frustrated. And after speaking and opening hearts and crying, the Lord came to Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, you are crying. You are weeping. You are saying all manner of things. If you cannot contend, With the ground forces, the chariots, if you can't contend with them, how much more when the horses are coming in? So somebody said, what does this mean? I'm going to explain to you. In the olden days, when there is a war, before the enemy comes in, if you read, do, do your reading, you check. Anytime there was a war, the ground forces, the, the infantry, the soldiers, the foot soldiers, they will come and they will, they will come like 800,000 they, and they, they are like bees all over the place and they will, they will be hiding in caves. They will be hiding in the highways. Because in order for you to win a war, the first step is to send in the ground forces, the infantry brigade. So those are the foot soldiers. Those, those are the ones who come in at night when you are finished eating your fufu and you are sleeping. They will come in the night. And then they'll be looking for how to enter your country, how to break through, how to destroy your walls, how to destroy the gates, how, which are, where are your weak points? And they do the survey. So in the day, when you get up and you think everything's okay, maybe you are just pounding your fufu outside with your soup. Then you hear, boom! That's the ground force, the infantry. The purpose of the infantry was to get close to you. If they can get close to you, Close. The closer they get is the better. Because when they get close to you, they, will, they, they, they can understand your armory. They can understand the way you behave, the way you sleep, when you sleep, the time you wake up. They get all those things together. Then they'll take that information and they'll go back into their strong room and they, they'll relay the message that these guys, they sleep at 9 p.m., the whole city is quiet. And they wake up at 4. So if we can go after them at midnight when they are snoring, because usually when you sleep, your first few hours is the beginning stages. Then you end to stage 2, where you go into like a sleeping comatose. At that time, when the thieves come to steal, that's when the thieves, that's why thieves come to your house after midnight. Because they know the time when you go into your second stage of sleeping. At that time, you don't move, you are sleeping. Those who snore, 
they will snore hard and you see the walls. That's where they come. Because that noise is so vibrant that if I come and I, I even take your wallet and I'm looking for change, you will never know. Because you have gone to stage, you then stage three. Let's don't let's talk about it. Stage three, right there. You are in the heavens. So the infantry brigade collects this information and they go. Now, what does this mean? I ask the woman of God to read Jeremiah 11, 18 to 20. Jeremiah did not know that his own family members, his sisters and the brothers and the father and mother were part of the group that has conspired against him. And he didn't know. In Africa, they say that you are sleeping on the bed, but your legs are outside the door. It means that you don't know what is going on. He didn't know. And when God revealed to him, it shocked him. Hey! You see, it takes me back into secondary school when a friend of mine told me something. He said, there was a cocoa farmer in Ghana who, when he sells his cocoa proceeds, the money he gets, he doesn't take it to the bank. He piles it after, under the bed. So for years, the, the cushion of his bed was the, the money, the bundles. So one day, the cocoa inspectors came and they were going from house to house. They said, well, you know, what are the problems that you guys have? So they got to this house. The man was not at home. And he had warned his wife that you are the only one who knows this secret. Nobody should ever know. So for years, the wife has kept the secret. So when they came, they said, Madam, is there, is, oh, my husband is not there. He says, so is there anything, any pesticides you're having on the cocoa? He said, no, 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 no. And they continued to probe, eventually she broke down and said, the pesticides that you guys would think would be on the cocoa is under our bed. They said, under what bed? What, what are you talking about? He said, Masa, please come, follow me. They went. So when they lifted the bed, the guy said, hey! How come? He said, my husband don't believe in banks. He believes that his safety is under the bed. So these people collected all the money in sacks. They took it to the bank. They opened an account. So when the husband came, the first thing he came, he went to the bed. Ah, Akosia. Akosia. Yes, Han. Because I like you have to answer Han. Because if you mention the first thing, it's not good. Han, the honey is the best one, which cushions things cool. He said, what happened? He said, honey, oh. Hey, you told them the secret. So the guy left home broken into pieces. He went to the nearest bar. And as he sat down, the first time, he has never drank Pepsi Cola before. He ordered Pepsi. And he was quiet. And he was an uneducated man. The first English word that came about from his mouth was that, ah! Talk about is nothing. But citizen! Ah! Ah! So the lady at the bar was saying, hey, sir, is it Harvard English or Oxford English. Where is this thing coming from? There was two students who were standing by the side. They said, ah, my brother, is this man a, a professor? They said, no, we don't. He said, but what English is it? He said, he was not even looking. He said, ah, ah, talk about is nothing. But citizen. The woman said, look, young boys, if you want to know where this man is coming from, go to his house. Because he doesn't even come here in the day. So they went to the house. They asked my dad, what is going on? He said, sir, it is not anything. What my husband is saying in those simple English words means that many people will talk about you. It doesn't matter. But the citizen, the one who is close to you, will reveal your secret. Are you hearing me? So when Jeremiah found out that the citizens, the ones who are close to him, the ones that he eat with, the ones that he eat gary and beans with, they are the ones who were conspiring with the people outside against him, he took a shock and said, ah! Talk about his what? Nothing? Citizen. So, in school, when we're in school, anytime we find that somebody is snitching on us and we don't want to mention the name, I will go, talk about his. Somebody say, nothing. Now that will say, citizen. Then we are going. So we know who is the snitch among us. 
It is a deadly English language. But Jeremiah, that was when the shock hit him. How many of you feel betrayed in your lives as a believer? When the people who are close to you, who knows you're going in and coming out, who knows you're rising up and you're sleeping down, are the ones who go and they will betray you. They are the ones who stab you on the side. All the frustrations, the things that we are going through, if you look very closely, you will find out where it's coming from. Citizen. It doesn't matter what they'll say about you, but the citizen, that's what I say, Abuabi Bekawa, if, you, if an ant will bite you, because it has been able to slip through your clothes, and when they bite you, I know when I was a young boy, I used to like climbing coconut trees. And there's a, a red ant called Bese, the red ones. When you climb the coconut, because they have the empowerment from the government to live on the coconut trees, they control coconut trees. So when you climb the coconut tree, they won't say anything to you. So as you get close and you are plucking the tree, one will pass in your shorts, another one will pass here, one will pass here. So when you hit here and you hit here, you hit here, you leave the coconut and you are coming down straight to the hospital. Oh, me, I ended up in the hospital many times. Jeremiah said, citizen, citizen. And that's God said, you don't know anything, Jeremiah. You have no idea what is happening. Listen to me, you got to pray. Because not everyone is happy for your success. There are people who are praying against you. There are people who don't like your, your, your prosperity. They don't like your rising up in life and going higher. They are saying things that you don't hear. And these things are controlled in the atmosphere. I went to... It was a festival in Ghana, in Adan. So, whilst the festival, the thing was going on, then the fetish priest was doing things, and everything. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an occasion people go. And I wanted to see what was going on. So, I was hiding in somewhere here. Hiding. And I've been watching the procession. Do you know that the fetish priest, after the proceedings, he started walking through the people. And he came to me, he said, You! You honorable man of God. I say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. Hallelujah. Fetish priests, they can see. Do you know who you are fighting? Jeremiah didn't know. So he went to God with his accolades. Oh, I've prayed and I've done this and I've done that. And, I, and then God said, no, 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 my brother, you got it wrong. If you know what is going, the contention that is going on in the spiritual atmosphere, you have no idea you increase and intensify your prayer. And Jeremiah took a shot. Then he became silent. Do you realize that any time there's a truth that hits you, it keeps you quiet. When you don't know what has been going on for a long time, and somebody can say, hey, do you know Auntie Agatha, your next door neighbor, she's the one who has been pouring acid on your flowers. So. And that's the same woman that when you cook, you send her half of your food, the okra, the goosey, and everything. We send her half. That woman, in the night whilst you're sleeping, it keeps you silent. And you start looking at the world, taking a good chance. So the Lord said to me, Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, I'm frustrated, I'm tired. He said, Jeremiah, if you are tired with the infantry, the ground forces, what are you going to do with the chariots? If you think this is a warfare now, where do you see what is, is it? Because the ground forces are the earthly forces. And as a believer, you have to understand that this battle of our warfare is what? Not physical, but spiritual. Mighty through God into the pulling down of the stronghold. There are forces in the spiritual realm that you don't see that are fighting you. The Bible calls them principalities, powers, rulers of darkness. Spiritual wickedness in high places. When Daniel prayed, the principality, the prince of the air, held the answer to his prayer for a month until the Lord called the master angel and said, go down. And help that angel to fight and bring the result to Daniel. The Bible, when the angel came, said that the first day you prayed, 
There are some of your prayers that are being held in the atmosphere. But I've come to declare to you tonight, you will get your answer in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, if you cannot fight with the infantry brigade, the ones that are close to you, your family members, who are doing simi dimi and things against you, and you cannot even see them, you don't even understand, how much more the ones that you cannot see, how can you fight? The chariots, he said, those are the ones who come in the horses. After the infantry have cleaned up the atmosphere and released the secrets and the weakness of the city, now the horses come in. Those are the, the speed, they come and they come with knives and swords. They cut people's head, they go into houses. I don't know if any of you can attest that sometimes you find yourself in a battle that you don't know where it's coming from. Today you get up, something is happening. The credit card company is calling you. Your job wants to fight you. They want to let you go. Then the phone call, your, your child fell down in school. Then the engine, then the, the battery. It's like all around. And you didn't see it coming. Nobody told you. Nobody told you. All of a sudden, everyone. Those are the spiritual forces. They are quick, they are fast, unannounced. They don't give you time. You, you don't have any idea. In the middle of the highway, your car will stop. I remember, I was in last week or so, and we're going somewhere. I went in the morning, nice, beautiful day. The sun was hot. I started the car. I said, you better wake up in the name of Jesus. I'm going out today, whether you like it or not. My wife said, yeah, can I get a boost? I said, I'll get a boost. You better boost today. We are going. I'm not taking that anymore. Because I understand how the spiritual forces work. They come unannounced. They don't tell you what happens. They bring you shock information. Are you hearing me? You are not prepared for it. They will not tell you anything. They just come boom. Man of God. I think it was 2009 or 10. We had a challenge with my son. And we didn't see it coming. We prayed, we prayed, we prayed, we fasted. And I'm going to bring in why dreams, visions, and prophecy is critical. I'm intentionally coming slow and slow. And when this news came, we were not prepared. Because we're battling certain things from different areas. We're battling. We're battling. <laughs> we're battling. Then we went to a ministry one night, and the prophecy came. He said, this is going to happen. And they pointed out specifically my son and everything. We prayed, we prayed, we prayed. Only just the day we didn't know, the day came, it happened. All over the news. And because of our last names, it's easy to identify. So I went to work. Hey, brother, Charlie, what happened? How, how did this happen? Hey, are you, are you really a man of God? If you're a man of God, how come, you, you see all these things as if you owe responsibility to your child. A lot of things were happening. I didn't understand the power of dreams and visions and prophecies. I, I know about prophecies. And during that time, we felt deserted. People had run away because nobody wanted to be close. Because when problems come, you find out who your true friends are. You find that there's a difference between acquaintance and friends. A friend is willing to die for you, willing to do anything at any level. That's why Jesus is the best friend. He will never leave you, never forsake you. So draw closer to him. The Holy Spirit is your best friend. He's inside you. You can depend on him at any time. And during that time, I started to experience dreams and visions. And the first vision, dream I had, as we we're battling and contending the case in court, one night I was sleeping, I had a dream. The Lord had taken me back home and I went to one of my best friends in school who, they were pineapple exporters. My wife and I were walking to the guy's house. And when we went to the gate, we knocked on him and I said, I would like to see Danny. Then the maid servant in the house said, hold on, come in. He went to knock and go. And when he knocked on the door, then he told the maid servant to come and tell us that, go and tell the judge 
that if he doesn't set your son free, I will come and set him free. I said, how can Danny, Danny is not a judge, he's a powerful exporter. How can you say something to me? So, but for some reason, when he told us that there was an assurance and we left, do you know that within a few months, the judge was taken to court. The judge who sentenced him was taken to court and he won against the judge. I've never seen a judge lose a case before. A judge, he lost the case. The judge lost the case. That the sentencing was too harsh. It was wrong. Are you hearing me? God works through visions, dreams, and prophecies. That, that when, we, when that thing was fulfilled, I said, indeed, you are God. That's why the Bible said, in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit. What computers cannot do, God will do. What science cannot do, God will do. What the teachers cannot do, what the billionaires cannot do, God will do. He said, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Everything you are believing for is in a dream, a vision, and a prophecy. He said, Jeremiah, if you cannot handle the ground forces, how can you handle the chariots. And I realized that time that, listen, total dependency on God and the Holy Spirit is key. Because he said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit. I want to ask you a question. Has the spirit been poured? Have the Holy Spirit been poured? Yes, it has been in the upper room. It is already done, which means that you are entitled to vision, dreams, and prophecy as a child of the living God in your life and your work to fulfill the purpose of God. Because computers cannot help you fulfill the purpose of God. It takes visions, dreams, and prophecy. And that is what happened after the tomb was empty. He said to the disciples, wait in the upper room. Don't rush. I'm going to do something that will come upon you, that will transform your life, that will turn the cities and the nations upside down. And that's the Holy Spirit. And when it comes upon you, he begins to lead you and walk you to dreams, prophecy, and visions. I remember one day, man of God, I was in the bathroom and I was showering it was in the afternoon. And whilst, I, I, I don't know, for some reason, I either went blank and I saw myself lifted into the middle of the sea. And the sea had dried down. It became like a cemented field. As far as your eyes can see. And I was standing in the middle of the sea. And I was asking myself, why am I here? The first question is that, where is home? How am I going to get back home? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> and whilst I was standing there, I saw the Lord release flags of different nations. They were the giant size of about 10 billboards. Falling from the sky, one after the other. As many as your eyes can see, the Lord said, son, I want you to look at this. I'm going to use you to reach out to all these nations and fulfill my dream and my purpose in all these places you are going to be going. Man of God, this is how the Lord speaks to me. Say, so you'll be going. I'm coming to a close. Because <laughs> I don't take too much time. We're going to pray tonight. He said, How? Are you going to do this? Because Jeremiah was wondering, okay, fine. I don't have the power to run with a horse. How am I going to do it? But God was saying something phenomenal unto him that he did not get. He said, I know that in man's power it's impossible to run with a horse. But my anointing that is going to come over your life will change the dynamics of the situation. I'm going to give you power to begin to run with horses. As a matter of fact, you not run with them, but you overtake them. There are people who have gone ahead of you. The people that Jeremiah was complaining about, that they have money, they have this, they have that, and they are so sick. God said, don't look at that. What I'm going to do, you overtake them. Some of you here are going to overtake whatever you will please. Cars you have not driven before. Man of God. Me, I said to say, Lord, me, I'm not going to relax crowd. I will not relax. I want private planes that I will use for businesses. People want to fly around the world. Quick. Don't go and stand in line. Pa, we are gone. France, we are here. Italy, we are here. 
I'm beginning to speak into my own life. He said, I'm going to give you an anointing, Jeremiah. You can't overtake horses, but you will be able to run and overtake them. Are you hearing me? There is an anointing that is going to come over your life that you will begin to run and overtake those who have overtaken you. You think that they have left you in the sand? Watch what is going to happen in your life. I'm speaking over your life in the name of Jesus. Everyone under the voice, hallelujah, that God is about to pour his anointing. From today, you begin to walk in dreams, visions, and prophecies. In the name of Jesus Christ, you begin to walk in visions. God will reveal himself unto you in a special way. Your eyes will open. Man of God, I've gone back to my country for so many years. I came here in 87. Somewhere in the 90s, I began to go back. Go back home. I said, let me go back to my roots. I'll go and come back. I'll go and come back. Take businesses and everything. Go. Some fail, 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 fail. Until 2015. I went to the Lord said, son, I've not opened your eyes. That's why you don't see what is here. I've, been, I've sent you here over and over again. But when you come, you are looking with your natural eyes. So you can't see. I said, Lord, open my eyes and let me see. Man of God, when you open my eyes, I say, hey! I didn't know there are billions of dollars sitting in this land. And the people are passing by, they don't see, they don't, they don't see the money. They don't see it. They pass by, they don't know that thing is. It is only when God opens your eyes. I'm going to tell you about running with the horses. I was at work right here at Leon's Furniture. When an idea came to me and they said, son, you've been working for this company for so many years. Have you ever thought about working for yourself? Because I don't see you coming to you because you ask and you receive. Right? You are not saying anything to me. It's like, you're okay. You're f- are you okay with it? And I realized that I'm not all right. I'm not all right. I said, then what do you want? And during a week or so, we were, my wife and I were brainstorming and I said, you know, I see in the real estate industry, there's no, nothing happening. Then I caught the vision of Remax. Now, when I looked at the criteria of taking, buying a Remax franchise, it's beyond my education. Because I'm working on the ground forces. I'm not running with chariots. So, something happened and we had to sell our second home. And the agent who came was a Remax agent from Ghana. So we had a conversation. I told the man of God, I have this vision of taking Remax, the franchise, to Ghana. I said, hey, Charlie, me, I've worked there for so many years. How can you do that? You, you don't even work for Remax. You are working for Lyons. I said, I understand, but I, I see the thing in Ghana. So you go home and think about it. He said, well, if you think it is true, I've worked for them for over eight years. You let me know how we're going to do it. I said, okay, I'll give you a call. The same week, I prayed and I made a phone call to the headquarters. I said, Mr. Kwachi, we've been looking for somebody for some time. We haven't found anyone. But if you're serious, give me a call and send me an email. I sent an email and they said, we, we will be looking forward to see you in Denver, Colorado, in the United States of America. I sent the email to my friend. He read it. I called him. He couldn't pay because he was in a shock. He said, yeah, I've never seen the CEO of the company before. I've never seen the managing, I've never seen. He said, all what I know is the franchise owner of this company. To make it short, we took a plane and we went to Denver. Brother, they ushered us into the CEO a building, a building, it's about, the building is about 22 levels. My brother, I'm standing by the building, I'm looking at it, I say, hey, you ready now, me? Me pa, me ne. Is this me? I thought you had forgotten about me. Oh. And we got into, entered the place, security. They came right away. Uh, are you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They gave us a pass. We entered. We went straight. We entered into the boardroom. Now, when we got into the boardroom, for the first time, I saw an oak table that goes way back in the times of the cowboys. My brother, that table, it would take about 40 people to lift it. And you could see, yes, this is indeed a CEO's office. 
And they told us to sit down. We've been sitting down gradually. I have to take some time. Because I have to believe that let my bottles touch this thing. That let me feel the thing that I am here. I am talking about running with the horses. I sat down. My two buddies who work with Remax, they were finding it difficult to sit. I said, Jews. Charlie said, Charlie said, we sat. We sat down for a while. You see the tension in the place. Yeah, some nice jazz music playing to cool you down. We are sitting down. You are, my feet is just one. I say, Charlie, Lord, I don't have the guts for this to you. <laughs> you know where I'm coming from. I'm just hustling. <laughs> but I'm here today. I'm sitting there. All of a sudden, the door open. Two security guards come in. They check everything. They come. Then the CEO walks in. Then we stood up. I said, God, I've never seen a billionaire before. It's my first time. I'm tapping into the anointing of the Holy Ghost. My brother, the man walks into the place. I've seen him on TV. I've seen him in CNN. But I saw him feeling kadochi, eye to eye. Yagani, yagani, eyeball to eyeball. Sat down with the security guys and everything. The CEO, the director, everything. They said, young man, we've heard about your interest to do that. I said, yes. They said, what do you guys want to do? I said, we want to take the franchise. Said, okay, fine. Then we're going to have it. So I said, Lord, Holy Spirit, wisdom and understanding, and revelation and illumination. So the question started to come. How are you going to do this? Give us your business idea. Da, 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 da. And I will be sitting and waiting. Holy Spirit, my, I told my friend, Jack, you were for Rima. So me, I brought the idea. You better speak. He said, yo, Charlie, you better speak for yourself. So we were depending on the Holy Spirit. Every question they ask us, we give them an answer. Appropriate answer. After 45 minutes of grilling, the CEO got up. He said, young man, do you guys want to go for lunch? Do you know what that means? I did not bring. The food is cooked. Look, man of God, he said, you guys will go downstairs. Wait, I'm coming. They came downstairs. The senior executives and everybody's looking at it. I look at the whole building. There was three black men. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the building. And I'm looking around and say, ah, can't I see a brother here and say hi? No, no, there was no brother in the place. We went down. Then the cars lined up. We sat in the cars. Pam, 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 pam. Down. We sat in straight pam. They took us to a restaurant. And the restaurant is a stand-up restaurant. You don't sit down. Because I mean, I'm used to, you know, when you're home, you, are, you sit down in the dining hotel. If you go out, you eat wachi and beans. And stuff. This place, you stand. And then the salad you know, shrimps, all the, 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 some things, different version. And I'm looking for banku, there's no banku. I'm looking for okra, there's no okra. Fried yam, no fried yam. Red, nothing. So me, I'm confused. So the woman is asking me, say, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? You see, I'm talking about running with the horses. What do you want? And I'm looking at the woman, Okay, I know my wife has making salad, so give me the salad. Give me some donut. I know both fruit. Give me the both fruit. And then give me the soup. And my friend is going to say, Ah, yeah, Charlie. Is that all what you can eat? I said, Dude, I don't know how to eat the rest. <laughs> yeah, let me eat what I know because me, I don't want to have a runny stomach. Let me, Mama, for what's them called? So my friends, they, they took the plate, they piled the thing up. You can see behind. Mountain over. Yeah, I'm not worried. We started eating everything. Then we went back into the boardroom. Cars. The f- when we got to the boardroom, he said the CEO came back again. He said, would you guys stand? We stood and he went and came back. Congratulations. 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 Said, you have the effect. I am talking about riding with the horses. Are you hearing me here? If I were you, I would get up and begin to run with the horses. Run with the horses because the Spirit of God has come upon you. You are running with the horses. You are overtaking the tyrant. Run with the horses. Run with the horses. Run with the horses. Run with the horses. If I were you, from today, you tap into 
with his anointing. You ran with the horses. Listen, it is not your educational. You always are. It's not, it is the anointing. It is the anointing that came upon Peter. He preached one message. 3,000 people came into the church. Let me tell you something. If you are riding with the horses, you better repair yourself. Because if 3,000 people get saved and you don't have the auditorium, how are you going to house them? Do you know, man of God, when we got a franchise and I sat down and I can't believe myself, I said, Lord, and then I remember that challenge, we have to pay for the franchise. I said, Lord, hey! hey. I was too excited, I forgot. But when you begin to run with the horses, God makes provision for you. I. He makes provision. He opens you up. He opens you up. He, you see, he expands your bodies. He expands your bodies. He stretches you. You find out that when you are, you, when you are speaking, you stand to speak with excellence. When you begin to walk, your walk changes. Are you hearing me? Your walk changes. And I remember they came to us. They told us we should go down. They started giving the booklets. Pass cars, everything. They said, listen, do you know this company is connected to Mercedes-Benz? After a period of time, you guys can have some discount in buying cars. Everything started to open up. And my man of God, I went to Ghana. We started the business. The Lord said to me, son, this is just the stepping stone. When you run with the horses, it means that the doors will open wide. Get ready. Not for one business, but ten businesses. Ten businesses. Today we are talking about the garbage recycling company. We are talking about affordable housing. Another man called me. He said he wants to start a gold refinery, the largest in the country. Phone calls are coming in. When you run with the horses, it is not by your might not by your power but by the spirit of God that is why God asked him if you are weak running with the infantry brigade how can you overtake the horses which means that you have to intensify your prayer life and begin to pray more and press deeper and deeper into God deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and you can get to a place where you've never gotten before. That's what God is saying that. Tonight, your life will never be the same again. Your prayer life, intensification. But work with God changes. How you spend your time in the day. Forget about social media. Let me tell you, if you want excellence, eh? if you want excellence, leave social media behind. Like the man of God, it for advertising ministry and everything but some people they spend their life surfing seeing what John has done Michael has done where this one and then it's a waste of time what you need is to concentrate on yourself and your relationship with the master are you hearing me some of you you are believing God for a husband I was touching on the subject of abuse right last night if you remember when I was praying you know that when I was ministering and I touched on the subject, there was a phone call coming in from my wife from Trinidad and Tobago. A lady who was being abused by a man and she was calling my wife for help. That's how bad it is. Don't be desperate for a man. Don't be desperate for a husband. God has a plan for you. You'll be surprised that when you pay attention to running with the horses, Whilst you are running, that man will be waiting for you. It will be at the business conference. You walk and say, sweetheart, you are the one I've been looking for for years. Are you hearing me? Listen, God has everything you need. The man of God said, he said, God has everything you need. He will never save you and leave you and you'll be desperate. Why are you wasting your time? God wants you closer to him wake up in the day, my mind is on him, my heart is on him, and I'm asking for new revelations. Lord, what does this mean? Where does this go? Now I'll call my wife. I said, you know, the Bible says, eh, 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 what do you think that, that we, start, that we start dashing into the thing? To know about God. 
just to know him. Because if I know him, my brother, I will overtake the horses and leave them behind. Tonight, we are going to pray. And we are going to pray for everyone tonight, man of God. We will need an anointing oil. 2021. I don't want to come back in 2020 and say, oh, Reverend, oh, you know, this lady. That, no, 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 no. I want to say, Reverend, since the last time the Lord sent you here, I've opened my own business. I'm just only 19 years old. I'm only 21. I've started my own business. It is not easy. I'm not saying that we open Remax and everything is okay. We had so much. The problems that we got is heavier <laughs> than just going into that place. Contention, pa. People walking away, they don't want to. But we are still holding on to the thing. Because we know God sent us there. And that everything is going to be alright. Because we are running with the horses. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Never allow fear to enter your life. If you walk running with the horse, you can't be half fear and run with the horse. Even the size of a horse, when you see a horse, it's frightening. How much more run and overtake it? But God said, I will give you an anointing. That anointing will separate the boys from the men. And the men from the boys. I told my wife this year, I said, this year, there's going to be a separation. Boys to men. We are no more boys. There should be men. That once we see and they will have respect for. You don't come to me and say, yo, 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 yo. No, 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 man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's a separation. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and begin to thank God. Thank God. Heavenly Father, tonight, your word has been presented. We are no more afraid of the earthly infantry. Family members, things that have been said about us, those that are close to us, predictions and predications and declarations and judgment that have been passed, we bind it in the name of Jesus. We declare that Father Lord, the anointing that caused Jeremiah to understand that it's about time to run with the horses because a new, and the Lord said, I'm going to do a new thing. Father, let that new thing begin in the lives of your children. Let it be, Father, a divine interception on the road to Damascus that will reverse and change the course of events in the lives of your children. I pray in the name of Jesus that everyone on the side of my voice will receive an anointing that will take them to a different realm in life. I pray over businesses, over their life, inventions, creativity, that everyone would begin to download from heaven. Those that want to produce albums, they'll produce albums. Those are going to open businesses in ICT, whatever father you place in your heart, begin to show them and give them the confidence and the boldness in the name of Jesus. The Father Lord, they will indeed know of a truth that the glory and the honor all belongs to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray tonight. Holy Spirit, take charge and control. And move over your people tonight. As Father Lord, we stand with them in agreement in prayer. That your will will be done in their lives. In the name of Jesus. They will remember that the tomb is empty. And in the upper room, there is a change of gear upon the saints of God. Who you told to wait in the upper room until they are endued with power. Let that power be upon your children tonight in the name of Jesus. The power that caused Paul the apostle and all the disciples to go through the cities and turn it upside down. I pray for that anointing to change. Those in their families that the family is looking upon, Father, they'll see Jesus in their children. They'll see Christ, the hope of glory in their sons and daughters those that have neglected their children they'll go back and bring them home in the name of Jesus they will not throw the keys against them they will value their lives that everyone is precious in the sight of God I pray over your children today in the name of Jesus Lord have your way one of God Jesus
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to be praying. Hallelujah. And the order will be line by line. You're going to come. The man of the house, the bishop, will begin to lay hands. Pastor Cherian will begin to lay hands. As you come one by one, bring the oil. Hallelujah.
There's no gun like Jehovah. 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 Nobody like a God. Nobody like a God. Nobody like Jehovah. Nobody like a God. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Nobody like a God. Nobody like a God. Nobody like Jehovah. Nobody like Jehovah. Nobody like Jehovah. Nobody like Jehovah. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Nobody like a God. Nobody like a God. Nobody like him. Nobody like Jehovah. 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 Nobody like a God. Nobody like God. There's no gun like him. There's no gun like him. There's no gun like him. There's no gun like Jehovah. There's no gun like him. There's no gun like him. There's no gun like him. Nobody like Jehovah. Nobody like Jehovah. Nobody like Jehovah. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. There's no gun like him. There's no gun like him. There's no gun like him. Miracle working God. Nobody like a God. There's no gun like Jehovah. 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 Nobody like a God. Nobody like a God. Nobody like there's no gun like him. 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 Nobody like Kaga. Nobody like Kaga. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. There's no gun like him. Nobody 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 like him. Say,
like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Nobody like Him. 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 There's no God like Jehovah. Nobody like There's no God like Jehovah. Stretch your hands. Stretch your hands towards the man of God. Stretch your hands. And I want you to release blessings over his life, over the life of the wife. Come on, lift up your voice. They have been a blessing unto us. They have been a blessing unto us. Come on, bless them. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. They have stirred up our spirit. Come on, bless them. If you are watching online, bless them. Bless them. Wherever you are watching from, bless them. Cabrado Ziva. Mantulia Katapa. You will not remain that place. No, 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 no. Your enemies, those who buried you, you will resurrect. Reverend, you will rise up. Kayato Shatapa. Makapayapa. Empty tomb. Lekabosha. We call for the help from north, south, east, west into the life of the man of God. We call it. 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 Whatever that the Lord has laid upon his heart, it will come to pass. 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 All the businesses will come to pass. All the business partners will come around quality people quality people quality people quality people quality people will come into your life quality people you will work with quality people will walk with you ay, 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 ay. we stand as a ministry we church we stand in agreement and we declare over the life of the man of God over his business, over his family, that there shall be a performance. As he came in to bless us, so the Lord will bless him. As he came in and poured on us, so the Lord will bless him. That next time he walk in here, he should have something new to tell you and I. The next time he walks in here, he should have a testimony to give to us, saying, when I ministered at We Church, after the conference, I saw turn around in my own life, in my family, in my business, in my children. Man of God, we cry unto heaven on your behalf tonight. And we say, Lord, help. answer him. 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 Hey, Nobody walks in here and leave being the same. Amen. That oil that works in this house will work for the man of God. Amen. Father, we honor you for his life. We thank you, Jehovah, for him pouring onto us. We thank you, mighty God, for the woman of God too. Amen. Jehovah God, you have anointed them to be a blessing unto many. We said we are grateful. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, somebody, let's give Jesus a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, say, man of God, we love you. Oh, come on, say it. We love you. We love you. Come on, rise up. Let's take our offering. Let's take our offering. Tonight, I want you to take an offering that has a voice. An offering that when it falls on a rat, the rat cannot run. It will kill that rat. Take an offering that has a voice. An offering that can speak on your behalf when you are sleeping. An offering that can create confusion in the camp of your enemies. 
Let me tell you, if you don't know that money has voice, I am telling you money has a voice. What are you talking about? Money has a voice. If you have never, yesterday I was sharing something with the man of God. I said, man of God, the first time I sat in, this was 2007. I sat in first class going to London. You see, economy food is different from first class. Food. When we, man of God, when we went back to London, the company was angry that my boss had to put me in first class. He said, ah, but he's the one going to do the job. Why should he be in the economy? My brother, money can talk. Oh. You can, uh, when they come, they ask you, do you want the whole bottle? Yeah. And I said, give me the whole bottle. If it was economy, they'll give me a small cup. They'll pour inside you, say you want more, they'll tell you no, they arrest. They give me with the hey, Kanda Brado Shata. If you are not careful, you embarrass yourself. You can stretch your legs the way you want. Lift your offering. Tonight, your offering will speak on your behalf. Lift it. Kanda Brado Shata. Father, we honor you. Everybody pick up an offering. If you don't have an offering, say, I don't. Me, I will give you an offering. By fire, by force. Lift your offering. Good evening, we church offering. family online. Finally Thank you so much for joining us for our third and night of our MT Tomb conference. What another powerful message by our man of God. Now it is time to sow a seed, uh, to show God, to challenge God that you can run with the horses and even better yet, you can overtake them uh, because God is about to do something new, something great in your life. Uh, but you have to show him uh, that you have faith. Uh, so I want you to pick up a seed, uh, a seed that talks, uh, a seed that is equivalent to what you are expecting God for I and I promise you uh, that God will not fail you uh, he has not forgotten you uh, so remember this is the time so into so into this message uh, because God is about to do something for you uh, Amen. father with this offering we said it is done in Jesus mighty name amen yes give us a song every time I turn around God keeps blessing me Every time I turn around, God, He blesses me. Say, every time, time I, I turn around.
the empty tomb. Empty tomb. The empty tomb. The empty tomb. Stretch your hands towards the altar. Stretch your hands. Stretch your hands. Stretch your hands. Halle. 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 Hallelujah. Sing it one more time. Hallelujah. 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 Do it one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, shout out that emotion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. you are. Can you say? We just want to sing it to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the Lamb. Hallelujah. We say
Lebrado Matoria Cabra de Santo Masha de Dibia Catus Lebrando Livahadia Catus. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, come on, say a big amen. 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 A quick announcement. A quick announcement. Tomorrow we are running two services. And we'll be having our communion tomorrow to here. Please, we have a list of those who are coming in from 12 to 1.45. Then from 2 o'clock to 3.30. Please, tomorrow we are doing two services. Um, those who gave their names out, please come according to the time that was given. And everybody knows what we are doing tomorrow. Our families in America, in Canada, in Ghana, we are all in this together. Amen. Amen. Please do not forget. I said we'll be, and I'll be anointing each and every one tomorrow. If you feel like coming with your uh, family, whoever come, let's anoint you. We are in our new season. The Lord has passed over between you and your enemies. There's a separation. The man of God says, we will separate the boys from the men. You see, one thing I want you to understand, from now on, pick and choose your battles. There are some people, don't, they don't need your, listen, they don't even need your time to fight them. 
when you decrease yourself to be fighting people who are lower than you, God said, Abba, there's bigger ones I want you to handle. How can I elevate you, promote you when you are still writing primary ones exams? Huh? Stop battling with food soldiers. Stop it. They are your, listen, they are your lowest you should be thinking about. You are busy crying about somebody who bought a Honda Civic, which is not even a brand new one, and you cannot sleep because of a Honda. When God is saying, is this why you are coming to me? You are complaining about Honda? When I have package, you should be thinking about the car that nobody has even sat down. Covered with rubber. You yourself tear the rubber yourself. <laughs> Sitting. Smell the manufacturer uh, 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 scent. Ah! You are there complaining uh, and, and you see uh, uh, Mr. J bought the wife a uh, 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 Mercedes Benz. What year? 2017. And you are crying over 2017. Mercedes Benz 2017. When God can give you Man of God, do you know I, the first time I saw Tesla in Ghana was uh, this man who has multimedia. Uh, what, what is his name? So the question I asked myself, how did they ship Tesla to Ghana? When there's no any Tesla repairer in Ghana. So when the cars pass, what are they? They say they'll put it back in the ship and ship it for them to fix it and bring it back to Ghana. That handles cars. Listen. In Nigeria, they buy pizza in UK yes. and they will take it to Nigeria for them to eat pizza. Oh. That's true. Yes. In Nigeria, daddy, daddy, I want pizza. They will call uh, UK, send us pizza. They pay money, they talk, <laughs> sit here and be crying over little, little things. Let's close the service before they say, Me, I've even done. Please, tomorrow, come early. Okay, while you're praying, the Lord just asked me to. Um, pray with you concerning something and it's not about how you start ministry it's how you finish it the finish is where the problem is and um, the enemy works so tight because to dimensions is about citizen and jesus christ was deceived by a citizen uh, citizens yes they are around so i'm going to pray that any accusation against you anybody who frame anything any citizen spirit that will attempt to come into this sanctuary and try to foil or put a paint over you, it will not succeed. Father, I decree in this message over your servant that the spirit of Sambalat and Tobias will not work in this house. Over we church, it will never succeed. And as a matter of fact, anybody who is planning or being going to use by the enemy, Eliminate them by way of substitution. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And release your unction over this ministry. From the beginning to the end. That will run the race. And reach the mark of the high calling in Christ. I speak over this ministry. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Today you have learned a new today you have learned a new word, citizen. Mm. Yes. And this one I take permission. I will use it. Uh. <laughs> it's the first line I've forgotten. I will learn it at the office. Mm. I, I will go and learn that one. Yes, yes. Let's share the grace. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord. Oh, 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 oh.